Hey guys, happy to be with you for 2023 football season. It's about to be here in uh, just over, well, I read about a week's time now. I'm Robbie Rhodes, happy to be back with you for another exciting football season. I'm joined by Mark Willoughby, Harris Beal, and Alan Waddell, all members of our Sports Network team. We'll be bringing the action all the 2023 football season, guys. Uh, I feel like we were just at Stanford not too long ago, and uh, we're back at it now for another football season. Um, happy to be with you guys, and happy to be back at it again. Mark, we'll start with you. Just your thoughts on this team. Oh, Robbie, uh, great to be back, as always. I know it seems like it was just yesterday the last time we had one of these, and it's been about a year, so uh, it's great to be back on. And uh, Lion football is here. A lot of expectations with this football team. Some unknowns with some new faces, but a very talented team. I know Frank Selfo and his staff are – Eagerly looking forward to putting on the field next week. Alan, uh, these seasons all run together, but we're back for another one. Yeah. It should be exciting, though. Yeah, you know, really excited to get started. Uh, hard to believe, that, you know, the the amount of success we've had, you know, the last, you know, think about the last 10 years, but really the last four years, three out of the last four seasons into the FCS playoffs, uh, into the second round of the FCS playoffs. And you just feel like this team is just each year is getting better. Uh, Coach Selfo is kind of figuring out, you know, what he needs and what pieces he needs to have this team maybe advance further, you know, and I think that's the goal. They were, you know, we were really close last week. Uh, I'm sorry, last year against Sanford, you know, lose a heartbreaker in overtime, have an opportunity to go back to the quarterfinals for the first time since 2013. Uh, but I think that coach really likes his team this year. You know, we lost some key guys off of last year's squad, but uh, this is going to sound crazy, but in some of the areas that we lost guys, we might be better. And, and I think that's something we'll talk about here tonight. Harris, you're in your second year uh, as part of the crew. Um, I know you're excited about this season as well. Just your thoughts coming into 2023. Yeah, big a big season ahead of us. Last year was a great year, uh, like Al, like Alan said and, and Mark. Uh, but this year is going to be even better. Uh, I think we have a lot of returning talent that are going to be uh, great. I think we have a lot of returning talent that got a lot of playing time last year that probably shouldn't have. So I think uh, the build on that going forward uh, with that, with that experience, uh, it's going to be very helpful for the season coming up. Well, guys, let's dive into it. Um, I'm just going to go down the line with you and, and you guys each. And what we'll do is I'm just going to kind of bring up some some broad topics and let you guys speak on your thoughts coming into the season. Um, we'll start offensively. And um, another season of, of a new quarterback is going to take the reins. I think everybody feels like Eli Sawyer is going to have a upper hand advantage to be the starter this year. Uh, people have a familiarity with him seeing him in 2022 split time with Cephas. Um, and I think people have some comfort with him, knowing what he did last year in some big, big games. Uh, Mark, we'll just start with you. Your thoughts on the quarterback situation in this offense? Well, it's not often you have uh, a first team all, you know, preseason all conference uh, selection on your uh, ball club, along with the second team all conference selection. That happened very often. And uh, Eli Sawyer returns uh, for Southeastern. He was second team all, uh, all conference, split time with Cephas Johnson last year. Uh, Zach Clement comes in from Northwestern State. Uh, he was second team last year. And because he was second team, and uh, he automatically gets bumped up to first team. So Southeastern, uh, very unique position uh, in the quarterback room. Uh, also have um, a young, young man by the name of Cameron Cooper who transferred in from Hawaii. But uh, right now, it looks like a two-horse race between Eli Sawyer and Zach Clement. And they've been pretty neck and neck in camp. You know, uh, Eli's got the heads up because, you know, he knows the offense. He's very comfortable with Greg Stevens' offense. But Zach Clement's made, a, made up a lot of ground here in the last couple of weeks. So I expect that to, that battle to play, off, play out during the season. Alan? Yeah, you know, excited to, to watch how this offense unfolds because, you know, it's one of those deals that as long as – you know, Greg Stevens is your offensive coordinator. Frank Selfo is your your head coach. You just you just feel like you're going to be good on offense. You know, the personnel sometimes looks different. The names on the jerseys are different, but the the results have stayed the same. The the thing I'm interested to watch um, for this Lion team this year that's going to be different probably than any other year that Coach Selfo has been here is what's going to happen in the in the quarterback run game. You know, every year Coach Selfo has been here, we've had an op we've had one of those quarterbacks that could come in and give us some running ability. Uh, they think that Zach Clement can be that guy as well. He can do some more of that because we know that uh, Eli Sawyer is more of a pocket passer. Uh, you know, that that's just been so much – there's been so much of our success has been on third and short, fourth and short, being able to run the quarterback, give that extra blocker, and, and pick up first down to continue to move the chain. That's one of the things we've been so good at. 
you know, the last several years is holding the football, uh, converting on third down, converting fourth downs. Uh, so I'm anxious to see how that works out. And then the wide receiver, wide receiver position is obviously something we have to look at. You know, we have a, a lot of new faces on, uh, out there. Uh, I think we have some exciting guys that, that are going to be big play guys for Southeastern. They just haven't done it here yet. So we'll have to see how that plays out. I think offensive line, we ought to be outstanding. I know we'll talk about that more in a minute. But as far as the quarterback goes, we saw what Eli could do last year. Uh, we know he's a good player. We know he's a winner. Uh, obviously, Zach Clement has not been in a in a winning uh, culture and a in a winning uh, program. I'm anxious to see him be a part of this and kind of buy into what goes on here. Because look, we know they're going to play two guys. They always do it. You know that's just kind of something they do. And it seems like you're not going to go through a college football season without having to rely on both of those guys at some point. Harris, your thoughts on this offensive team coming into the year? Well, historically, you know, Southeastern has had that two quarterback system. And I think this year will be the first time where both quarterbacks have a lot of experience as the starting quarterback. You have Zach Clement was a full-time starter at Northwestern state. And then you have Eli Sawyer who came in and, and got a lot of valuable reps and starts um, for Southeastern last year. So I think that's a huge advantage. Uh, whereas b before, uh, you know, you had CJ backing up Cole and getting in some reps here and there. And then he became the full-time well, when he went down last year, Eli got a chance to be the guy. Uh, so I think this year seeing uh, two quarterbacks with a lot of experience underneath uh, Greg Stevens' offense is going to be uh, be key and, and almost better. Yeah, I think that's a good point. You know, Cephas had been on the team. He had gotten a lot of snaps, but it would kind of been a wide receiver running back. He had really never taken any significant snaps at quarterback. So I think Harris makes a great point. Last year you – had a familiar guy that people knew the name of him and seen him play on the games, but he's never played quarterback this year. It's, it's, it's a two guys that have a ton of experience starting in football games. Um, Clem is, is okay. So I'm going to ask you, Mark, is it, is it Clement or is it Clement? Well, what? I've heard it said, said both ways, obviously, you know, Frank Selfo says claim off. He, he's from new Iberia and it's claim on those neck of the woods, but I know Patrick Netherton with Northwestern state, you know, radio is, has asked him, and he said it's Clement um, because they called him Claymall for two years. And toward the end of last year, he asked him, you know, just kind of an offhanded matter, and he said he said his mom would rather him call him Clement. So uh, apparently they say Clement, although they're from the part of the country that says Claymall. So I'm sure he'll be called both, but uh, we're going to call him by what he wants to be called, what his mom wants him to call, and that's Clement. There you go. Um, Alan, I think you hit in your talking – a little bit about this offensive line. It's going to be really good. Um, you know, just we'll go down again, the line guys. Just talk about this offensive line in terms of what – how it ranks in terms of the groups Coach Selfo has had since he's been here. Mark, your thoughts. Well, it's uh, – you know, again, we talked about the quarterback situation being uh, – I don't want to say loaded, but obviously two uh, experienced returning players. The offensive line, you know – which what was what a, a situation that was very hairy last year with a couple of injuries to both starting tackles, Jalen Bell and also uh, Brennan Lanclos. Uh, you also lost your starting right guard during the season. So uh, basically played last year with six offensive linemen. Because of that, you get two of those guys back from injury and uh, and Bell and Lanclos. And plus you return all five, basically four of the five starters otherwise are back. So it's a very uh, experienced group, a lot of depth. Uh, you basically have three starting offensive tackles and also uh, Ja Orgeron as well. Uh, you're going to bump uh, Brockheim Wicks inside to right guard. And then Jail or uh, uh, Javin Turner is going to switch from right guard to left guard. And of course, John Allen, who's an All American returning, who played left guard last year, will bump into his uh, natural position of center, which is what he was recruited as. So it's a very uh, tight knit group, very physical, uh, very experienced. You've got some young guys under them. They really haven't played a lot, but they've been here a while. They know the system. They can plug and play as well. So uh, they'll go eight or nine deep, very solid, uh, with a couple of extra guys. And um, it should be a strength of this football team. Alan, this uh, offensive line, I think it, I think you and I have talked off, off the air, so to speak, a lot in the last month. When you're good on the offensive line, you're usually good on offense. And I think that's going to be something that we'll have to see very, very uh, early on this season, if, if that is true it, with this football team. Well, look, here, here's the thing. You know, the part of the country we're from, you know, it just feels like you can always find receivers and running backs and skill position guys. Uh, 
but it's difficult, you know, to, to find dominant offensive linemen at the FCS level, you know, especially if we're going to compete nationally with some of the big boys, in the Northern United States, uh, where just people are larger. I mean, they're just taller and longer and, and, you know, we don't have a lot of that down here in South Louisiana, but I feel like this year, maybe, you know, the, the, the most experienced um, best offensive line maybe we've ever had here at Southeastern. Now that's got to play out. You know, they have to play that way, but on paper, that's the way it looks. And look, you know, we've talked about him a lot, but I mean, I think we have the best offensive line coach in FCS football and AJ hop. I mean, he he's done a tremendous job. The ability of coach Selfo to retain him throughout his tenure here at Southeastern ha- has been, you know, of utmost importance that we had a lot of continuity on the offensive side of the football and I think that this year you're going to see us, you know, with a new quarterback, uh, you know, with two guys that that haven't – they've started games, but they haven't played a, a ton. I think we're going to lean on a running game. You know, we saw the running game be a huge part last year. Uh, you have some talented backs. You have another – you have a transfer back in uh, this year, Harlan Dixon, that's going to carry the football along with Rodeo Graham and some young guys as well. But I think the offensive line, especially early on, when you're playing Mississippi State, when you're playing South Alabama – if you're good on the offensive line, you have an opportunity to stay in those types of games. Now we got to keep them healthy and we got to get those horses to the race when conference play, when, when it certainly matters. But I think on paper, this is as good as group as we've had. Harris, same thing to you. Yeah. Alan hit the nail on the head with AJ hop. Uh, last year we're holding our breath after week two, seeing three offensive linemen go down and, and you're having to plug and play freshmen and sophomores who have no experience whatsoever and to be able to, go into the playoffs and 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 make it to the second round. Um it, it's it's a huge credit to AJ Hop and what he can do in developing players. So I think this year now you have nine, eight or nine guys that he can has the ability to rotate in, fresh legs, uh will will be great in a in a Greg Stevens offense when it comes to versatility and and also just depth in general and and play calling, I think. Um, that experience, uh, you only get that experience by playing in the games. And I think last year, that's 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 going to help these these young guys as they go into year two uh, as starters. Well, guys, uh, um, you know a lot of skill. Allen brought the backs. Uh, uh, just talk about some skill guys that y'all looking forward to see uh, next Saturday at Mississippi State. Uh, Mark, a guy who give me one guy that that you're excited to see. Uh, in those skill position, wide receiver, tight end, running back, as we march into Saturday. Well, I, I really can't name just one guy. There's a lot of guys, obviously. But, you know, Alan touched on it earlier with the running back position. Harlan Dixon is a transfer from Louisiana Tech. I think is going to be a bell cow uh, type running back in this offense. And also Rodeo Graham returns as well. I think we're going to see those guys a lot. But there's one guy behind them I think is going to emerge as the number three back and could be – you know, you know, you don't want to put expectations on on a true freshman, but DeAndre Jackson, uh, his nickname is the Jet, out of Carr High School, uh, rushed for over a thousand yards last year, averaged over ten yards a carry, and he shows that kind of dynamic ability in camp. I think he's a young man who could come in and make a Marcus Cooper type impact as a freshman. If you remember back uh, to 2017, when Marcus Cooper came in here as a walk on from Altair, Texas, uh, at over 600 yards on about 60 carries, and I think. DeAndre Jackson may have a chance to have that kind of impact in this offense, you know, just because he can, he can fly, he runs a, you know, sub 10, 600 meters, uh, not a real big guy, but shifty has an extra gear that really shows up on the field. So I think he's one, uh, a couple of other true freshmen who I think, you know, Lion fans are going to really enjoy seeing are Mike Williams, a wide receiver out of Shaw high school, a true freshman, and also Jalen DiMaggio. So I think those are three new names. I think we'll see emerge hopefully in this offense as time goes. We'll see how how long it takes them to step up and and really be featured in this offense. But I think, you know, they're going to get opportunities early. And then the tight end position is um, as exciting as it, as it gets in FCS football. And you've got Jacob Logan back healthy. Uh, 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 Drabowski is back. He, um, you know, had limited touches last year, had six touchdowns. He's a reigning uh, or the preseason all-conference selection at tight end. And then Bauer Sharp is a freak, and he's only put on some weights, about 245, 250 pounds, uh, runs a sub 4'7", and uh, very athletic, almost like a, a big wide receiver. So I think the tight end position is going to be fun to watch, along with those young wide receivers. Alan? 
yeah, you know, Martin's kind of covered it. You know, a lot of a lot of guys offensively, you know, guys that a lot of guys we haven't seen a lot of. Um, but I think you know, Martin goes to practice a lot. I've been a few times, and you know, there's just some you know, our bodies look good. We have good looking kids out there on the outside. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to see Darius Lewis. We saw him last year, yep. you know, like as a punt returner and stuff. I mean, he, you know, he's he's a small guy, but he's bigger this year than he was last year. He probably gained 15, 20 pounds, and on his frame, that's a ton. Uh, and you know, he's shifty. We saw what he could do last year, the punt return game. I think you're gonna see him working out of the slot a lot this year. Uh, excited to see what he does, uh, you know, for this for this line football team. That's a good point, Alan. Darius Lewis uh, has been electric in practice. Uh, again, you talk about the physicality. A guy that would probably weighed 145 pounds maybe last year. He's probably you know, 10, 15 pounds heavier. Looks more physical. Uh, every bit as quick and uh, very confident. I think we're going to see him really do some good things early in this well, line. Mark, you know, he, he reminds me a little bit of you know the guy that that was for Idaho last year that that the shorter yeah. receiver that that were in the kickoff yeah, back against yeah. us. That I mean, we we couldn't cover him. I mean, he was all over the place. And uh, you know, kind of, I think he has that type of in him. You know, he's 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 going to be very good in the return game. But I think we're going to see him really catch the football. And they've very, they've been raving about him at practice. But we get we need some of those other young guys. It's going to be some freshmen out there on the outside uh, that are going to really have to step up for us uh, as far as running the I mean uh, throwing the football. It, it's it hasn't been you know it's been a while here for Southeastern under Coach Selfo and, and Coach Greg Stevens that I think we're going to have to like kind of ease into the passing game a little bit. I, I don't think you're going to come right out the, out the gates and be slinging it all over the place. I think this team by week four or five, you're going to see more dynamic plays in the passing game. I think early on, you're going to see a lot of, you know, easy throws and you're going to see a lot of run game, especially early on. And not to give anything away, but I think you're going to see a lot of uh, balance formations, a lot of heavy run formations. You're going to see play action. Um, you know, just to ease those young wide receivers into the, into the, uh, process and you have some big physical running backs as well. We talked about Harlan Dixon, Rodeo Graham, both go well over 200 pounds. Another guy I didn't mention was Cyrus Zool, who's a transfer from uh, Butler Community College, uh, has a chance to uh, factor into that number three back situation. Uh, talent wise, as good as anybody on the roster, just hasn't been here enough to uh, get the protections down and obviously grasp the entire offense. But I think once he does, you'll see his role pick up as we get forward into the season. Harris, uh, you know, this is a team that's just put up a ton of points and a ton of offensive numbers for the last couple of years. Um, what's your gauge on how this offensive looks? Does it look like that, or is it more of a, um, I don't say average offense, just a more of a controlled offense where it's just not this electricity, but it's more of balance uh, on a consistent basis? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, like, like Alan and Mark said, you know, week four, week five, I think we will really get into the heart of the offense. Uh, you got a lot of new names on the outside. Uh, you have Rodeo Graham who's coming back, and you have Harlan Dixon transferring in, learning the new offense. Uh, but you have two good backs in the backfield. Um, I, I think talent-wise, though, as a whole, I think you have a lot of guys that, that could play anywhere, especially in the Southland Conference, and, I, and I, they're, they're really good. Um, Mark touched on Ballard Sharp. Last year, trans transitioning into a new role from quarterback to tight end to just kind of a Taysom Hill type player. Really interested in seeing what he is going to be doing uh, in the offense this year and how he'll be used because he is a freak. Mark Mark touched on it. He is an athletic specimen. Uh, just six five, two forty, can run like a deer. Uh, just just a good good athletic kid. Uh, so. Really, really excited to see him. And then also um, Rodeo Graham. You know, he had the experience last year being kind of rotating at the end of the year, three back. Now he's got a chance to be the one of the two. So uh, good experience for him uh, this season. Hey, guys, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Jacob Logan, too. You know, we kind of yeah. got a small dose of him last year because he got hurt early on. Then he got hurt in the Central Connecticut game. Um, but, you know, he was going to be a big part of our offense a year ago. Uh, had the had the knee injury. He's back. He's fully healthy. And, and Mark, I know you you go to practice all the time as well and talk to this coaching staff like I do. And they love this guy. I mean, they think yeah. he has a chance to be the best tight end in the league. And you're talking about Jaboski, who's back, who who led us in basically. I think he led us in touchdown receptions last year. Bauer Sharp back, and then Jacob Logan. There's not a lot of teams that are still using tight ends. We do. Uh, and I think that's why we've been able to attract good candidates to come here and play tight end for us. I mean, you just think of some of the guys we've had, Nolan Given and Branson Schwabel. I mean, it seems like every year we have an all-conference tight end. 
And, and this year, you really have three guys on your roster that could be all conference, uh, and, and Jaboski, Bauer, Sharp, and, and Jacob Logan. But I'm anxious to see Jacob Logan play a full season. I hope he can stay healthy. Um, you know, he looks the part out there. He's a big physical back. I mean, a tight end that can catch the football and block in the run game. You know, that's a, he's a big, he's going to be a big part of this offense. We got to keep him healthy. But you just said it. He can he can really block in a run game. He's not the biggest guy. He's about six two, six three, about two thirty, maybe two forty. But he can get vertical. He can run routes like wide receivers. We talked about Bauer Sharp earlier. Uh, he is probably the most complete tight end on this roster as far as ability to do both. Uh, Bauer Sharp's gotten better in the in the run game as well. Um, you know, but in Drabowski, he's just kind of Mister Steady, not the most gifted physically, but. Uh, just always seems to get open and catch the football. But Jacob Logan, as you said, you know, we, we saw, you know, in camp last year, looked a lot like Nolan Given. And then, of course, early in the season before, you know, this offense really got on right. track, uh, we weren't able to really see him get involved. Had he been health, stayed healthy, no telling, you know, how many passes he could have caught on the year. And I, I you know, I've kind of gone on record privately that <laughs> – um, uh, I think we may see a wide or a tight end catch 50 balls this year. But between the three, I think somebody's going to step up and catch a lot of footballs. Hey, hey, Mark, and the other thing about about Jacob as well is I mean, he's played a lot of football. I mean, he's an older player. You think back with the, with three the COVID schools. year. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he's played like a three lot years of football. He's, he's, he's <laughs> an older, uh, you know, he's an older player. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing. You know, that you know, with, with kind of, you know, like I said, you know, you talk about – if it feels like we're out of it, you know, it's been so long ago, but it really hasn't, you know, COVID has still, is still affecting what's going on in college football. You have some older players out there and Jacob Logan is one of those guys. Well, let's talk about that real quick about the the veteran presence on this offense. You start with Eli Sawyer, you know, he's a redshirt sophomore by grade, by eligibility. He's been here four years. Uh, Jalen Bell's been here four years. Uh, he's in his fifth year. He's a, he's 23, 24 years old. Lanclos is 23, 24 years old. Brock Eam Wicks has been here five years. John Allen's been here four years, and he came from junior college. Um, Javin Turner's been here three. So that's your offensive line right there. Jacob Logan. Yeah, older players. Yeah, Jacob Logan's, is, I think he's in his seventh year of college football. Um, then you uh, look at the wide receivers. That's probably where mo the most inexperience is at this point. But offensively, where it really counts in the trenches, you got a lot of veterans uh, and also the quarterback position. And then you flip over the defensive side. I know we'll talk about that here in a minute, but uh, a lot of guys have played a lot of football, a lot of maturity. It shows up in their bodies and a lot more physical. They're more mature. Um, you know, they've learned how to take care of their business off the field. And it's going to, you know, there's no substitute for experience and uh, veteran presence in a locker room. Guys, um, just jumping to the defense, I'll go down the line. Just, uh, Mark, who were the guys that are standing out so far in practice that you've seen on defense? You know, defensively, I would tell you early in camp, you know, I've had a chance to probably see 80% of the practices. And early on, the defense, is, defense really stood tall uh, on that side of the football. I, I would say probably for the first time in a long time, you could say the defense was way ahead of the offense early. Um, and I know – you know, we're going to talk about it. It's going to sound a little bit ridiculous and maybe a little bit, of, you know, like a homer. But, uh, you know, Southeastern loses four all-conference defensive backs from last year. He lose Fernando Jordan, who was an All-American. Zy Alexander, an All-American. Jack Henderson, who was on his way to being an All-American. And then uh, also uh, Donnell Ward-McGee. Out of the back end of your secondary, plus a couple of other guys, uh, Barbie, uh, graduated as well. And I think the secondary may be better. Uh, it's more talented, I think, across the board. I think there's, it's more athletic. Uh, I think you've got more natural cover guys, uh, especially on the outside corner. I think a little bit more range at safety. Uh, you may not have the superstar right now who's elevated his game to that point. But I think as time progresses, I think you're going to see that secondary really uh, stand tall. And we talk about the, the defensive line. There were a lot of injuries in the defensive line last year that – you know, Roddy Sopcher went down. He lost four defensive ends before the season even started. And uh, you return a young man, uh, Shamar Pearl, who was um, who missed last year due to an eligibility issue, is um, a young man. It's really going to stand out when you see him physically. He's about six foot five, six six, about two fifty five. Uh, you know, can run a rush of passer. He can run like a linebacker. He's the guy that's going to make a big difference physically as far as his presence on this defense. You get Rodney Sopcher back in the middle. Uh, Tyreek Mitchell, who's a senior bowl watch, 
uh, candidate, um, you know, from Hammond High is really mature as a football player. You got him back inside. He's an older kid. Uh, Javin Sanchez is a young man. They signed out of junior college. I think it's going to make a big impact. Is about 290 pounds inside. And then you've got uh, Garrett Crawford from your neck of the woods over in Slidell, who's just Mr. Reliable at defensive end. You get Arla Williams back. Uh, Josh Randall can really fly off the edge. And then you've got uh, Herman Kristoff, who uh, is quietly maybe one of the best linebackers in the Southland Conference. And then Anthony Britton's back as well, along with Dante Daniels. So there's a lot of talent on this defense. Um, I think it's going to be much improved. We'll have to wait and see. You know, as always, we, we say that every year. Defense looks a little bit better, a little bit better. Injuries crop up. But I really think this uh, defense has a chance to to really make some big strides here in 2023. Mark, uh, excuse me, Alan, your thoughts on this defense? Well, you know, this is going to sound a little silly, but, you know, maybe the biggest, you know, returner is our defensive coordinator. This is this is the first year since Coach Selfo has been here that we're going to have the same defensive coordinator two years in a row. And, and you know, I think that uh, Coach did a really good job on the defensive side of the football, um, you know, last year. And like I said, there's some continuity. You can see um, – you can see that we're doing some different things. Like they're like we're deeper into the package right now than we were a year ago because we're being able to, you know, we have same terminology. It's, we're not teaching the defense. You know, you, you have guys that have been in this defense now for another year, and I think that's uh, that's going to be huge for this team. And you know, I remember sitting here last year when we were doing this preseason, you know, uh, call or whatever, and and saying, "Man, I'm really worried about our linebacker position. We, we're kind of unknown at linebacker." Well, now you look up and, and we might have the best linebacker uh, core in the Southland and, and maybe maybe in the, you know, the Southern United States as far as FCS. I mean, Dante Daniels turned out to be an absolute stud last year. Anthony Britton is big in the run game. He's a big physical uh, guy. Herman Kristoff, Mark said it. I mean, look at the accolades he's put up here since he's been playing uh, football for Southeastern. And then we have young guys as well. So I think that when you're good up front in the front seven, I think that certainly gives you an opportunity to be pretty good. And we talked about on the offensive side of the football, you know, when you're good on the offensive line, you're going to be good on offense. When you're good on the D line, you're going to be good on defense. And then, you know, obviously the way the football has changed and, and so many people throw the football all over the place, you got to be good in the secondary. And, and, and I'm going to echo what Mark said, you know, not very often you have, you lose a couple of guys in the transfer portal that are now starting at the power five level. And you look up and you say, Hey, we, we might be better, you know, in those positions. And I know that sounds crazy to say, but if you go to practice and you watch, we have a really hard time getting open and completing passes. And this is a, a – we know it's a good offense. I mean, we just we just spent 30 minutes talking about how many good players we have on offense, and we've had trouble during camp at some times getting a first down. And for me, instead of looking at that as a negative on the offense, I'm looking at that as a big positive for where we're at so far on defense. Harris? Yeah, I think that – I think in the secondary, our skill positions are, are going to be elite. Um, but I think the biggest – thing for me is going to be our physicality up front i'm thinking back to some past football teams and you know there there are times where we got out muscled on the deal you know offensive line versus defensive line but i think this year with with guys coming back and our size up front i think we're going to be as physical as anybody up front uh, in the run game uh which is which is going to be good for us being able to match up especially the first two weeks going to going up against an sec opponent and and then also then South Alabama the next week. So I think uh, seeing their physicality get tested the first two weeks could be be a good good thing. But then secondary, um, you know, losing some guys that are, were household names at Southeastern, uh, Zy Alexander, Jack Anderson, but replacing these guys with with some some unknown names to the Hammond community, but names that will be household names just from their play this year. Well, guys, um, there's no doubt this is an exciting group, uh, uh, but you just got to see what what this what this what the season brings. Let's dive into this schedule a little bit. Obviously, we get underway Saturday afternoon against Mississippi State in Starkville. Um, then you have another FBS game, another year, second year in a row where you have two FBS games start the season, which is tough. Going to South Alabama and then to Eastern Washington, so no home game for the Lions until late September. Um, how crucial! Is it to at least find a way to win one of these first three with what you have in front of you and schedule wise, Mark? Well, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, last year, you know, we're sitting here at this time, two FBS to start Lafayette and, um, and who was the other one? Florida Atlantic. 
Uh, of course, you came home, you got three in a row at home. You had uh, Central Connecticut, uh, UIW, and Murray State back-to-back. And so, But this lays out a little bit tougher. And, you know, scheduling's a big deal. You know, in college football, as you know, you can schedule yourself out of playoffs. And I'm not saying that's happened here. Obviously, last year, you have the experience of going 0-2 and, and bouncing back and running off uh, eight out of your last nine and probably could have won all nine. Um, straight after, you know, falling behind 0-2. And, and you look at it, you got an SEC West, a, a very good bowl team coming back from last year, nine-win team who a lot of people think can be better than last year. I know they're a little bit of transition offensively. We'll talk about them, I guess, later. But uh, it's an SEC team. They're very good, very good on defense. You have a defensive-minded coordinator who's taken over as head coach. And then South Alabama is a 10-1 team from last year. has everybody back. So you're looking at it going, okay, it's uphill in the first two ball games, then you got to go on the road to face a traditional power in Eastern Washington who had a down year last year. And they came in the year last year, ranked 15th, uh, finished, I think, won three games last year. But they got a lot of guys back. They brought in some transfers. They feel like they're a lot better. Okay, so now you got to fly across country to, you know, play your third game after a tough uh, start in your first two ball games. And you come home, you get a conference game in Houston Christian, and then you've got Tarleton State, who uh, may be the sleeping uh, under-the-radar team out there who's uh, brought in a lot of transfers, and they're kind of up and coming, just now getting eligible for, or I think it's their last year of transition before they're playoff eligible. But they're, they got a chance to have a really good team. So we'll know more about them opening week. But that's five games out of the shoot, and you, you got to realistically win two of them. And uh, if you can go two and three to start um, – you know, we're three and two, obviously, and that sets you up pretty well. But it's very important. You got to come out at least with two wins. Al, the schedule? Look, anytime I talk to anybody, I, uh, that I'm always preaching, we have got to stop playing two FBS games. And the, the level of support behind Southeastern football, you know, we're, we're right there as far as what we're doing year in and year out of, of becoming a national brand, of being in that top 25. But listen, we've been to the playoffs three out of the last four years. We've played three home games. We're 3-0. and We've played three road games. We're 0-3. you got to play home games in the playoffs if you're going to go far. And – when you're playing two FBSs in an 11-game season, it's difficult. Now, I'm not making any excuses, you know, for the team. that You know, they have to play the schedule that's in front of them. But, look, we're going to be, you know, underdogs in, in the first two games on the road in hostile environments. Uh, hopefully we play well. And then you go out there in week three against Eastern Washington in kind of a, you know, kind of an SC, FCS uh, marquee matchup really for this year. You, you conference, cross-conference game. I mean, this was a big game to get on the schedule, and they're going to return the trip here uh in uh in, uh, next year in, in 24 so that was a great you know coach self was trying to get these type of games and i commend him for doing that because that's going to help grow our brand fcs and the fcs landscape but it, it's just very tough out the shoot i mean when you look at the schedule this is probably our toughest travel maybe ever i mean when you look at the the, the road games we have we're, you're talking about three out the shoot road games. And then you have to go to Commerce and to UIW, the two longest trips in the Southland Conference. I mean, our travel this year is brutal. So hopefully the team, you know, can 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 rally and can play well. Because like Mark said, scheduling is huge. You know, you look at UIW last year, okay? If you look at how their schedule played out, there's a reason they were a national seed and played so well and were able to get those home games in the playoffs and get that bye. I mean, they played an FBS that they could beat. Uh, in Nevada, uh, that was that's been down, and, and you know it just there's there's more to building your football program than just putting a great product on the field. It it takes commitment, you know, from the university to not have to play some of these games to to hurt your schedule, and also forget about if you lose the first two to the FBSs, what it does to your team physically, and you know last year Mark made a great point. You know we we went zero and two. But then we came home and we had a great scheduled game in Central Connecticut, a D1 game that was that was a layup, an opportunity to kind of a get-right game. And then you turn that around the next week and beat UIW. You know, if you don't have that game, you probably don't beat UIW in week four. But we don't have that game this year. And, uh, listen, we got to play well early on because, you know, I think if you're going to make the playoffs and not win the conference, you got to beat Eastern Washington week three. I mean, I think it's a must win. And you hate to say that right off the shoot. 
but you got to win that game. And it's going to be tough if you're 0-2 against two FBSs and have to grow across the country and play a really hungry football team that's trying to turn their program back around. Uh, you know, they're a traditional powerhouse in FCS, and they were down last year. And you know they made some adjustments in the offseason uh, to get back to where they want to be. You know, to further expand on on schedule layout, Alan, uh, we talked about the first two. Obviously, you got Eastern Washington come up against Houston Christian, then you have uh, Tarleton State. But you've got to turn around and go to UIW after Tarleton. That's going to be the sixth game in a row. UIW has an open date. Uh, the week before, and then they play a non-D1 the week before that. So they basically got two weeks uh, to prepare for us, whereas we have to go on the road in our sixth game in a row. Um, you know, I, I think all head coaches would tell you that six games in a row is about the limit you want to play uh, before an open date, and that'll be the sixth game in a row. So uh, it's going to be a challenging schedule, no question about it. But if there's any team that can handle it, it's this team. It's a veteran roster. A lot returning on the offensive line. You got a you know experienced quarterbacks. So you got a very experienced coaching staff who returns intact. So you know from that standpoint, I, I think this team's in good shape to do it. It's just that again, the schedule is going to be difficult. Harris, your thoughts on the schedule this year? Yeah, just real quick. Uh, if you look at the at the final eight teams in the playoffs last year, they they all played one FPS game. And and the Montanas of the world, the North Dakotas of the world, they're playing one FBS game if if they're even playing one. And I think, you know, having to play two right off the jump, um, you know, physically it hurts, but mentally, you know, you, you're you're going into these games where you're not favored to win. You're not supposed to win. And you start the season out 0-2. You're, just, you're in a hole. You're digging, you feel like you're digging yourself out of a hole the first – six six weeks trying to get back to that four and two mark uh if you if you can't upset uh one of these big schools so uh, i think going forward hopefully scheduling will will get better but um you know starting out with the sec and then also a tim win south alabama team it's not going to be easy um but you know hopefully we stay healthy and we're able to at least um put out a good product uh, those two first two weeks and build on that before we go to Eastern Washington. Well, guys, uh, it's been a good start to our season previews. Um, I'm going to go down and just give you your final thoughts as we head into the first week of the season. Uh, Mark, what you're looking forward to the most as we head into week one? Well, it's, you know, start of football season, obviously. I mean, that's, we look forward to that every year, but I just want to see how this team comes out of the shoot. You know, again, it's a veteran team we talked about. Uh, veteran offensive line, veteran quarterback, veteran coaching staff, and emerging defense, defensive coordinator, as Allen said, coming back for a second year in a row. That's the first time since Ron Roberts you know, was the head coach and he coordinated uh, his defense in his last two years here that we've had the same defensive coordinator. And if you go back to 2012, uh, what is it, uh, 10 or 11 defensive coordinators? Uh, so uh, this team has a chance to finally get some continuity. They have the af athletes to do it. So uh, I think this is going to be a really good football team. It's going to be fun to watch. I think it's going to be able to elevate to the level of play. I know you play an SEC team, it's hard to say you're going to match that level of physicality, but I think this team is capable of uh, putting on a good uh, good show and giving uh, Lions fans some hope uh, coming out of that ball game. And I think they got a chance to compete against South Alabama. Uh, again, you just have to stay focused, uh, kind of get through that first wave, uh, first third of the season. And so you can get in the conference play and get on a run. I think this team's got a chance to get back to the playoffs and have a very good year again. Alan, your final thoughts. Yeah, guys, it, it's here. You know, we're, we're uh, essentially in game week. Uh, looking forward to being back on the road with you guys on Saturday uh, as we go to Mississippi State. And, you know, a lot going on this week as well. You know, Coach Cristofo will have his first uh, meeting with the media uh, on Monday. And then, you know, we'll have our first uh, – inside Southeastern football with Coach Selfo. We're actually moving homes this year. We're going to go to walk-ons. We're going to be at walk-ons this year. Uh, we're excited about that, going to our new home here um, in 2023. But, look, it's a veteran football team. Certainly some question marks uh, outside of wide receiver, you know, other than Massey and, and um, you know, who are the other guys that are going to step up? And, you know, I think we have a lot of candidates to do that. Uh, I think our running game looks strong. Our offensive line, we talked about it defensively. I'm really excited about where we are at this point. You know, how many times have we said, hey, if we can just slow people down, 
you know, we're going to win a lot of games. Well, I think we're going to have the ability to do that this year. We're going to slow some people down. Um, offense might not be as dynamic, especially right out the shoot. But I think, you know, every, if you have Rex Stevens, you have Coach Selfo, you have this offensive uh, coaching staff, we're going to be good on offense. I mean, I just – I just all I believe that in my heart that we're always going to be good on offense with these guys. They do an incredible job of identifying talent and developing talent, and the next the next wave up always is ready for that challenge. Uh, and then we're starting to see that on the defensive side of the ball as well. And one thing we didn't talk about, uh, I feel so confident about our specialists this year. Oh, uh, you Alan, know, you, you know, our, you stole Harris's thunder. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll, I'll leave that for Harris. I'll leave that for Harris. But uh, <laughs> look, it, it's a it's a challenging schedule. Um, now we get rewarded with an incredible home schedule in 24. Uh, you know, that's something that's that's certainly exciting with South Dakota State coming here, Eastern Washington coming here uh, in 24. But we got to get through this 23 season. And, you know, we want to keep this streak alive. Again, throughout the last four years in the FCS playoffs, uh, we've become uh, a household name in FCS football. And I think, you know, anytime I saw one of the FCS – you know, writers put out the other day where they were kind of ranking the teams in the last 10 years in FCS football, and we're in that conversation. And, you know, and, and that's a conversation we want to be in, And but but we're, we're just scratching the surface of, I think, what we can be. And I, I hope that this year, you know, it's another one of those years where people are saying, oh, well, you lost this guy, you lost this guy, you lost this guy. And then if you turn around and you're good again, then this is this is becoming a you know a program that it just you 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 roll out a good team every year and that's what Coach Selfa wants to do. We believe in that. That's why we signed him to a seven year deal. I mean he had, he got the longest deal in the history of the Louisiana system, and that's because we knew that this is who we wanted to be our coach in Hammond. We felt good about what he was doing. He's not out, you know, just he's not doing the UIW approach where he's just bringing in all new players every year and you know changing coaches all the time. We're trying to be a consistent winner develop players and it's been it's been successful to this point i do think this is something we didn't touch on earlier i do think the league is going to be better this year i think mcneese is going to be a lot better you know nichols is going to be back uh to what they expect to be as well um you know i I think northwestern has some question marks hcu has some question marks i think lamar's got a new coach they'll be better Uh, and then obviously uiw they loaded up with a ton of transfers uh, again so i think this league will be better this year and uh, so in, in years past, you, know, you just got to get the league and then you can beat these teams because some of them have been down. I don't think you have that luxury this year. I think we have a very challenging schedule. We're going to have to play well every week if we're going to get back to the playoffs here in 23. But I'm looking forward to getting started. Harris? Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we spoke on offense and defense with guys returning and the depth and, and the experience and, Alan almost stole my thunder with the special teams. No, he did steal your thunder. No, but we, we all know we all know that I love special teams. Uh, but we we might have the best duo in in FCS football with Austin Dunlap and Riley Callan Callahan, uh, kicker and punter. Uh, without a doubt, two great weapons to have in the special teams game, which is a huge huge part of football. Uh, and then also we lost our long snapper last year in week one. We're not using a tight end. Uh, as long snapper anymore. So we'll get uh, Kor- Korboski back um, at long snapping. And then Mateo Rangifo, experienced veteran at the kickoff duties. So uh, I think we're going to be super talented again, special teams wise, which in my opinion, special teams wins championships. Um, but great. It's going to be a great season. Look forward to being in Star Vegas with all you guys. And it's going to be a fun year. Absolutely, guys, and um, these seasons just come quickly, but it's hey, a lot of fun for me. Bobby, real quick, uh, uh, we're taping this on Sunday night. Uh, should be out uh, later on this evening, but uh, Tuesday night, talk about Tuesday night, Sam Herter with uh, Hero Sports coming on. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have Sam Herter on. Um, you can be able to catch that probably you know, late, I would say, Tuesday night. It will be posted or Wednesday for sure. Um, it's going to have uh, a sit down with all of us with Sam and just kind of getting his thoughts. I think it's, I think with that guys for the fans, we're going to have a lot of uh, talk. Of, we're going to talk about lions and the Southland conference, but I think with, with Sam, we're going to talk about the broader sense of the landscape of SCS football, because you know, we just want to give our fans as much knowledge as we can about who our peers are in this level of football and, and, and where he sees, FCS going because I think there is some questions about what FCS looks like with conference realignment here and just kind of 
went on a roller coaster ride again this summer. Um, where does that go? What does this all look like? And so we're going to talk a lot about FCS football in the landscape, heading into the playoffs, who he likes. Um, we're just going to talk to him about where the Southland stands. You know, um, obviously you've had two teams that have made it in at least the second round of the FCS playoffs now for three straight years. UIW who made it in the semifinals last year. Um, how does that success by, I know it's been really two teams in Southeastern and UIW, but that success obviously has to amount for something. Um, so we're just kind of got to hit on all those things with Sam. I know you guys, guys are going to have some great questions. So look for that, you know, late Tuesday night or Wednesday to be posted on the line. We'll have um, uh, Coach Southwest press conference tomorrow broken up and do the clips and highlights from that. So you get an early listen from Coach on what he feels like he's looking forward to for Saturday. And then obviously Alan mentioned the show's uh, Monday night live from walk-ons in Hammond out by the mall. So guys, it's busy, busy time. Mark, uh, anything else you kind of want to talk about with Sam that you want to preview? Well, we can obviously talk about the landscape of FCS football. I think that he's the guy, him and Craig Haley are as good as there are in FCS football. And, uh, we'll dig into that and talk about the meat and potatoes of FCS football, how where Southeastern fits in his view, because, you know, Sam will, he'll tell you like you, like, you know, tell you like it is. He's not going to sugarcoat anything and give you his honest assessment and um, looking forward to having him on. But I, I also wanted to say that we're going to try to make this thing a more regular uh, occurrence, uh, this podcast, because uh, you know, last year we, we meant to do it. Uh, more often, I think we're going to try to dig into this uh, more consistently and give the fans what they want, which is uh, more Lions football. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, thank you all. Uh, again, uh, Mark, get this edited up and get online as, as soon as possible. Thank you all for being with us. And uh, like I said, a lot of a lot of ways to learn about the Lions this week from two different venues with Coach Selfo on Monday and then getting ready for kickoff on Saturday. We'll be on the network ready to go for you to bring the 2023 Lions season. And for Mark Willoughby, Harris, Bill, and Alan Waddell, I'm Robert Rhodes saying good night, guys. And we'll see you down the road. Football's here. Have a good night.